Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I would like to show you how to create this cursor effect that we have on our very own website. Now, this has been highly requested from a lot of our users. And before the motion page updates, uh, we would typically give instructions to our customers how to make this using custom code. But as you can see from our change log, we introduced in version 2.2, a new mouse follower trigger, which makes this cursor effect very easy to make. So let me show you how to create this. What we have basically is three elements. Now maybe it's a little difficult to see but we have a subtle gradient uh, which is quite large in the background. You can see it when I uh, move the cursor like this. So we'll make the gradient first and then we have two more smaller circles which is closer to the actual cursor and you can see the small circle moves just a little bit faster than the larger circle and the gradient in the background is the slowest. So let's go ahead and create this cursor in motion page. So I've just gone ahead and created a simple page here. Uh, we have a link, some images, just so that we can see how the cursor reacts to all the elements on the page and I've also added the theme toggle here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this page within motion page. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and create a new timeline here. And I'm going to call this my cursor. I'm tied in the home page here. This is just the page that I created. And now what we can do for trigger is we select mouse follower. And as you can see, we do have some presets available, including the radial gradient. But I'm going to go ahead and start from scratch so that you can see the whole process from start to finish. All right, so what you'll see first is the cursor instances. Now we can go ahead and create uh, many instances, but let's just start with one for now. So I'm going to right click here and delete, right click, delete. And number one, this is going to be our big gradient that we'll create first. So the way we created this is we gave it a width of 100 viewport width. Now, obviously you can see that's very large. I'm actually going to remove the height I'm going to add a new property at the bottom and uh, let's do aspect ratio. And this is going to be one by one. So now you can see we have a perfect circle and it's very large as you can see. The next thing we need to do is add a gradient to our background property. And this is going to be a radial gradient. So I'm just going to paste the value that I have and I'll walk you through it. So as you can see, we are using a radial gradient and it's circle from the center. The main color I'm using here a variable and this variable is coming from core framework. And that just means if I change the color in core framework, it's going to change on the cursor also. So it's starting at the uh, middle from primary color. And as it goes towards the outer edge, we go to the transparency. The border radius we don't need. So I'm going to right click here and delete it. And obviously this primary color is a little bit extreme. So I'm just going to add an opacity here of 0 0.15 just to make it more subtle like so. Now when I move my mouse the gradient is moving a little bit too fast so I can slow that down here and I'm going to change this value to 0 0.25 and now it's a little bit more delayed when I move the cursor which is much more desirable in my case. Okay so that's the uh, gradient one set up so next let's focus on these two circles. So we'll go ahead and create the bigger circle first. So back in motion page, I'm going to create a new cursor instance. Now you can see here, maybe it's a little bit difficult to see actually, but there is a black uh, border around here. So I can see that my second instance is working. I'm going to change the width and height to be 30 pixels. I don't need a border, so I'm going to delete that one. Border radius also, I don't want. I'm going to change my background color to be white. Uh, so as you can see, obviously I do need the border radius. So I'm just going to add that here again fix my typo. There we go. And the last important one that we need is the mix blend mode. And this needs to be set to difference. So the good thing about this mix blend mode is we can use white here, but because the background is dark, it's always going to be a lighter color. So that means if I change the theme toggle, we actually don't need to use a variable because the background changes automatic, which means this mixed blend mode being different will automatically become a darker color on whatever background it's hovering over. So you can see here when I hover over a link, for example, or darker text, we can always see it underneath. So you'll notice also when I hover over this link, it gets bigger, which is quite a nice effect by default. 
and that's because on the hover state here we have different widths so it's going from 30 to 80 uh, which is why it's getting bigger and we are targeting all a tags as you can see here now we do also have a pressed state as you can see so currently when i click the whole thing disappears but that's okay because when i create the next circle we will use that to uh, control the pressed state so let's go ahead and create the final one so instead of starting from scratch what i'm going to do actually is delete that and i'm going to right click on our second instance and i'm going to duplicate it because i want these values to be pretty much the same except for the size so we'll change this to 10 all right, so because this one is also set to difference and it's resting on top of the white one, it automatically becomes a darker color. Now, the only issue is that they're moving at the same time. So let's change the smoothness of our smaller circle to something like 0 0.6. So it's just a little bit more snappy like so. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the pressed state for this one. And I just changed the background color to be white so that when we click we can see that the smaller circle in the middle becomes 10 pixels and it goes to the white color. And the final small issue that we have now is when we hover over a link, we get this strange effect going on. And that's because our third instance is also having these values. So I don't need the height. I'm going to delete that. And then the width, I'm just going to change it to be zero. So basically we are only left with this hover effect on the second instance, which is much better. So when I click, you can see it goes smaller. When I hover over any links, it gets bigger, 80 pixels. And it's always having this mixed blend mode of difference. So you can see everything below it. And when I change the toggle as well, the theme toggle, it also works as expected. So there you have it guys, a very simple tutorial. And this is, like I said, it's been highly requested and Thanks to the new mouse follower trigger, this is now easily possible without using custom code. And as you can see, it's quite easy to set up. Uh, it takes less than 10 minutes. So I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Please leave your comments below and let us know what you'd like to see next. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.